So developers love shiny objects. It happens to new beginners and it happens to experienced developers. I would say maybe a little less often with experienced developers, but it still gets us sometimes. When it affects beginners, it could be detrimental to your learning because what happens is you kind of set a path and you say, I'm gonna learn these things. And you might start off with the first web development tutorial that you do, and you're more than likely gonna learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but then you're gonna go off and start learning about backend stuff. And that's where things can get a little bit messy because if you choose to learn the MERN stack, it'll be like, oh, just learn everything in JavaScript. But then you go and you look at the job market and you realize it's all C sharp and Java. So you're like, all right, maybe I shouldn't learn this stuff because it's not that great. But then you look in the freelancing and you realize it's all WordPress and now you're like, oh man, maybe I should learn PHP. But if I'm gonna learn PHP, why don't I go learn Laravel? Because everybody keeps talking about how awesome Laravel is. But if I'm gonna use Laravel, why don't I just use Ruby? Because that's been around just as long and a lot of people like that too. And then you're like, you know what? Maybe I'll get into machine learning and I'll learn Python. Now, scratch that, I'm gonna go build apps and I'm gonna go learn Android. No, I don't wanna work in Android, that sounds terrible. I'd rather develop for iOS, so I'm gonna go and learn Swift. You know what, maybe I should learn React Native instead, because if I learn React Native, then I can just build it once in React, and then I can publish my app to both Android and iOS. And then you're like, well, if I'm gonna learn React Native, why don't I just go back to web development? Because I already learned HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and everybody said I should learn React afterwards. And now here we are, talking about shiny objects and how it affects people. But when I was first starting out, I went through all that. I jumped around between different programming languages and I went from one thing to the next, trying to think that it would be easier or it might be a better way into the industry. And I just wasn't aware. So then I would get caught up and I'd start relearning stuff or I'd start wasting time learning things that I wouldn't use. For God's sakes, at one point in time when I was getting started, I tried to learn Haskell because I had a potential opportunity to get an interview somewhere if I just passed a few coding challenges that were in Haskell. And if you don't know what Haskell is, it's a functional programming language. It's pretty geeky stuff that a lot of people like, but if you know, you know that somebody who had just started learning about web development going into Haskell was probably the completely wrong direction. And then that happens to newcomers. And I wanted to make this video to reassure you that it's normal to happen you hear about a shiny new web framework that you want to check out that seems to be doing a lot of cool stuff or you hear about a new ORM that's better than the last ORM that you used or a new backend as a service that's really great or you're looking at a whole new tech stack completely because you're tired of writing code in the same old boring programming language that you've been using for years. Just know that this is part of being a developer. It's part of the learning process and enjoy this learning process because this is something that you're going to come across often as you're gaining more experience. Experience. And as you become a more mature developer, you're still going to have to worry about shiny object syndrome. And that's fine. Just remember that it's good to be aware, but don't get distracted, especially when you're getting started. So some of the reasons why you want to stay away from the shiny object is that usually you're not going to get a good enough understanding of everything that you're trying to learn. Then your learning becomes surface level knowledge. And it's okay to have surface level knowledge on some things, but it's not okay to have that in the areas that you're trying to specialize in. Because if you have surface level knowledge, you're not going to be well equipped enough to get that first job. And if you continue to have shiny object syndrome, you're going to work in different languages and different tech stacks, and you're never going to be a master of one thing. And of course, it's debatable whether or not that's good or not but i will say that it's better to be really good at one thing in software development than it is to be a jack of all trades and we all become jack of all trades but most of us are still specialized in one area and that's what i've noticed and again depending on what you're trying to learn what area of software development you're trying to get into could be different for everyone but you do want to get good at whatever you're trying to do and then you'll also end up wasting a lot of time. I kind of went on that rant talking about how much time you could waste and how that could be really bad when you're first getting started because you're gonna spend months and months learning things. And if you keep changing your focus on different things, then that's all gonna be time wasted into tech and languages and 
things that you might end up not using if you go and spend a month learning the syntax of one language but then decide to switch to another language because you heard that, that one was better then you're going to end up relearning syntax and you're going to be learning a lot of stuff that isn't going to really build your skills as a developer because once you get enough experience things like syntax is something that you can pick up quickly but if you don't have a good understanding of core fundamentals of software development then you're not going to really know what you're doing and learning different syntax is going to just be a waste and you'll also get burnt out if you do this too much if you kind of change directions too often especially when you're learning how to code and just getting started you're going to end up burning out because it's, there's already too much to learn being a software developer you're learning all the time and you're learning a lot of stuff and when you're first getting started you get overwhelmed by how much you need to learn and if you keep doing that over and over you're probably going to burn out and you don't want to burn out before you even get a job wait till you have a few years of experience before you burn out like the rest of us all right so I guess a few tips that I might want to throw in here before I end this video is just try to stay consistent. Once you find a path that you want to take, stick to it, find the way that you like to learn and stick with that. If books are boring for you, which that was my case, I didn't really enjoy learning from books, then do videos or do tutorials that hold your hand a little bit more. Eventually you want to get to the point where you're reading documentation and you're not doing tutorials. But if you are at that first getting started stage where you do need tutorials and you need your hand held more, then do that. Just remember that most technologies, most programming languages, most tech stacks kind of all fix the same problem. And in the JavaScript framework world, there's like a new framework coming out all the time and there's constant hype around new technology. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you should change your direction and go try those new technologies if you're already focused on learning something else. There's a lot of developer advocates. There's a lot of people hyping up tech all the time. It's their job. Even influencers who make videos on this stuff or are on Twitter, it's their job to hype up tech. And many people have a lot of opinion on the things that they use. Developers are some of the most opinionated apples on the planet. And I mean that as a term of endearment. I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I mean that in a nice way because I think having opinions is important and most of us end up working with the things that we enjoy and the stronger the opinion sometimes the more you got to take with the grain of salt of what they're saying because the strongest opinion isn't necessarily the best opinion kind of look for what people are using look for what companies are using look for what is popular in the industry not just amongst influencers just remember to focus on your journey because Everyone's different and people learn different technologies all the time and learn whatever best suits you. And you can do this by getting mentorship from someone rather than going on the internet and getting advice from strangers. Try going and meeting some developers in your local area. And if you meet developers in your area, you'll kind of start seeing what they work in. And then that'll give you an idea of what companies in your area might be using. And then that might give you a good reason to change directions if you need to, or to build on top of what you've already learned. So I think that it's always better to meet some developers in your area, preferably in person and get advice from real people, not, you know, us dorks on YouTube who make videos to get views. And at the end of the day, I'm trying to share some experience and a little bit of what I have been frustrated with shiny object syndrome, because it's something that I still struggle with. I struggled with it when I was getting started and I still struggle with it now. So I just wanted to make this video to help some people out there who might just be getting started in their learning journey and let them know that they're not alone, but to stay the course, focus on the stuff that you need to focus on, use those roadmaps that you have at your disposal and figure out what it is that you're trying to do with these skills and then lay out that plan and stay on track. Don't get distracted. Don't go towards the shiny object. Don't follow the light. Follow the path that you need to follow in order to get to where you're trying to be. All right. With all that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.